Hey guys, it's Pelly. I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to What Happened to Them, a series devoted to celebrating the career of legendary 90s supermodel. Without further ado, let's begin. Remember for her iconic theatrical runaway appearances, Emma Schoberg was born September 13, 1968 in Stockholm, Sweden. She grew up in southern Sweden and never dreamt about being a model. Emma said when she was little, no one thought she would become a model, not even her own mother. She didn't think she was good looking and got teased a lot for her appearance. When she was 18 years old, she was offered modeling work with Mika's Modeling Agency after entering her hometown beauty contest. Shortly after graduating school, Emma became Sweden's Miss Hawaiian Tropic and got the opportunity to travel to Milan and Paris. With a striking figure and piercing blue eyes, Emma was the real-life Barbie doll. Her modeling agency recognized her for her determination and ultra-professionalism. In the beginning, her main reason for modeling was to avoid student loans for her studies. But after finding immense success with the modeling industry, she changed her plans and decided to fully pursue a modeling career. After bringing Terry Mugler's and Gianni Versace's pieces to life on the runway with the theatrical performances, Emma became a certified supermodel. She worked for top designers like Izzy Mizyaki, Claude Montana, and Oscar de la Renta. Emma has been featured on over 200 magazines, including Elle and Cosmopolitan. She has also appeared in two music videos, one for Vanessa Paradis' Tandem and for the legendary George Michael's Too Funky Song. At the end of her modeling career, Emma also became a successful actress. She starred in all four of the critically acclaimed French film series Taxi and has made live television appearances. On February 12, 2003, she married Han Wickland and has two children together. After 12 years in the industry, the supermodel moved back home to Sweden to settle down with her family. During the 2000s, Emma went back to school for a business economic degree and was a board member for Swedish fashion retailer Lindex. So where's Emma Schoberg now? The supermodel founded her own personal brand, Emma S, and is dedicated to her thriving skincare line. She most recently was in French L and participated in the Cover Up campaign, all about encouraging people to get vaccinated. Remember for always bringing it and killing it on the runway, Emma Schoberg is forever iconic. Even if you don't know her name, you have definitely seen the supermodel somewhere before. Irina Penteva was born October 31, 1967 in Russia during the Soviet Union. She is of Buryat descent, which is one of the largest indigenous groups in Siberia. Ever since she was a little girl, Irina was surrounded by colors and fabric. Both her parents dedicated their lives to the Buryat drama theater, where her father was a musical director and her mother was a costume maker. She learned to sew at a young age and later got a degree as a fashion designer. At age 21, Irina started modeling for a small designer in China. She later went on to participate in a 1989 Borean Beauty Contest and won the title. In 1991, Irina was a part of Italian-French designer Pierre Cardin Fashion Show in Moscow, helping her gain a lot of attention from the modeling industry. One year later, she relocated to Paris, where she signed with Maryland Modeling Agency. In Europe, Irina got her big break in the industry after successfully getting the attention of Karl Lagerfeld. He cast her in his Haute Couture Chanel show, and she was on her way to becoming a supermodel. Irina started working for top fashion houses that every model would dream of, like Dior and YSL, and became one of Vivian Westwood's favorite models. She found even more success in New York City, working for Anna Sui and Alexander McQueen. The supermodel also did campaign for Gap, Kinzo, and Calvin Klein. Irina could also be seen in a number of top fashion magazines like Vogue, Paper, and even the Sport Illustrated Swimsuit Issue and became the first Asian model to do so. 
the groundbreaking model also had a short but memorable acting career. She is best remembered for playing Jade in the Mortal Kombat movie and had a small role in the 90s sitcom Third Rock. Her last runway show during her career was for Christian Dior Fall Couture 1997 show. In 1998, Irina published her autobiography Siberian Dream, a memoir. For her personal life, the supermodel is the mother of two sons. She married photographer Roland Levin in 1994 but got divorced in 2008. She once launched a fashion line called Irina. So where's Irina Penteva now? Irina returned to the runway in 2005 and is still part of the fashion world. You can keep up with her on her Instagram where she shares throwback pics and raises awareness on important topics. Irina Penteva was a trailblazer. We should know her name and celebrate her achievements. Born on May 24, 1971 in Spain, Helena Barquilla burst onto the modeling scene in the early 90s and became a notable Spanish supermodel. Growing up, Helena loved to dance and practiced various sports and martial arts. At 18 years old, she decided to pursue a modeling career with the desire to travel around the world. One of her very first shows was for Manuel Pina, a Spanish fashion designer during Spain's Madrid Fashion Week. One year after her debut, Helena was in high demand, wanted by all the top designers like Pierre Balmain, Christian Lacroix, and Emporio Armani. She was often seen walking alongside and working with high-profile supermodels like Claudia Schiffer. Helena went on to be featured in Vogue and Woman magazine. The supermodel was praised for her glamorous Spanish beauty that went perfectly well with haute couture creation from Terre Mugler and Christian Dior. Helena was becoming a household name in the industry. She had success, money, and recognition. She got to travel the world like she wanted, but deep down, she wasn't happy. In 1996, she began to explore and train in several therapeutic and spiritual practices before stepping away from the fashion industry at age 27 to begin a path of self-discovery. Helena later relocated to the Andes Mountains where she lived with the indigenous people and connected with nature. She lived there for four years and got an anthropological degree at the University of Cusco. Helena became passionate about Five Rhythms, a movement meditation practice, and trained for seven years to become a teacher. She went back home to Spain and became a yoga and bodywork practitioner. Helena didn't completely leave the fashion world though, showing up and supporting fashion designers from time to time. In 2015, she was on the July cover of S Moda, and in 2017, she walked Madrid Fashion Week for Juan Dueos. So where's Helena Barquilla now? The supermodel is passionate about meditation and created a program for women's empowerment called She Moves. From a glamorous supermodel to a meditation instructor, Helena Barquilla has a very unique and inspiring story. Deborah Shaw was born November 14, 1976, and is an American supermodel known for her out of this world beauty. She grew up wanting to be a designer and actually studied design for three years in high school before ultimately deciding it wasn't for her. Deborah started out modeling in a community center. She learned how to walk from a pediatrician named Dr. Nestro Philpot, who taught walking lessons to community kids during his time off. After he passed away, Deborah entered the Model of the Year competition in Newark, New Jersey, and won a trip to Paris. There, she got signed by the Ford Modeling Agency and won her first haute couture show for Paco Rabanne. She went on to work with all the top photographers and designers like Gianni Versace, Givenchy, and Valentino. The legendary supermodel was highly demanded for the runway because she always brought something special to every show she was in. From Terry Mugler to John Galliano, Deborah has a lot of iconic runway moments, but one moment during a Alexander McQueen show in 1997 still served conversation. 
She stole the show, walking down the flooded runway in a metal rectangle that shackled both her elbow and knees. It became one of her career-defining moments. Deborah's career was not limited to the runway though. She also made film and music video appearances. Deborah went on to work with Jean-Paul Gaultier, Vivian Westwood, and Yves Saint Laurent. The supermodel career slowed down in the 2000s, but she maintained a good relationship with the industry be a feature in the Victoria and Albert Museum in London, and appear in the McQueen documentary. In 2018, Deborah made a huge comeback into the modeling scene, walking for Moschino and Mugler. She also received her first ever Vogue cover after two decades in the industry. Deborah ended up walking for Off-White and Natasha Zinko. She also graced the cover of La Officielle in Days Magazine. So where's Deborah Shaw now? Well, the supermodel is still very successful, constantly being booked. She most recently was featured in Vogue Italia and is currently the face of Dior Forever makeup. With her wispy figure, Deborah Shaw is truly out of this world. Her impact is felt and she should be remembered as a legendary supermodel. Well, that's the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like and comment, subscribe for more fashion-related videos, and remember to keep living that fashion life. Bye!